All right, so try number two. Now that we have good internet, we're live. Yeah. And uh, so this, I'm hanging out with Mason today, who's been crushing it for a couple years now. And I don't know all of Mason's story. I just know that he's been eating up a lot of the programs for the last couple of years and is doing great. So he was starting to tell me about, well, I'll let, I'll let you take a man. So how, how you got started in this thing and just start with how in the world you got into what you were doing before this. Yeah. So I guess this story starts even earlier. I've always been an entrepreneur. I was ironing money at a really young age because I was obsessed with money and dollar bills. I was because I wanted them to be crisp and flat. <laughs> and in college, I just was looking for an outlet. I needed a vehicle. So I had a fraternity brother whose dad was in trades, um, a, a very trades guy. He did all the work himself, got paid in cash, didn't pay taxes, just like a, a backwoods Texas guy. And I saw this money that you could make in trades. So we started buying leads on Home Advisor and, and selling away. And I, my wheels were really spinning and wasn't making a ton of money. And I read the email and that's when I discovered I needed systems. That's kind of how I found Painting Business Pro. And then from there, specialized in paint. And it's been a lot more successful since. So um, that was in so January 2017. So two years and a few months ago is when you got the course. So, okay. So we started the business in March uh, with this dude. And so what's been, what's happened in the last two years? Numbers wise, growth wise? Uh, just the whole, yeah, just the whole thing. How's it gone? Like, what, you know, ups, downs. Just uh, whatever the highlights are that would come to mind, you know? Yeah, the highlights, I mean, really the growth. Um, 2017, we did 160000 which felt like a million bucks. I was like, oh my <laughs> well, because how old, how old were you at the time? 20. Okay. Yeah, 2021. And it just felt like I was the king of the world. I remember selling the $60,000 contract to Gateway. And I got the whole thing produced like right at 50%. And I was like, holy crap, this is crazy. So I started chasing money. Um, I had to keep watching your video, How to Grow Smart. I was like, just keep watching this video. Because that's one of my problems. I see all these opportunities. I'm in a huge market out here in DFW. There's commercial everywhere. So I've made the follow commercial money mistake like five, six times now. <laughs> And it just, so it's just beating. Uh, and then let's see, 20, 2018, <laughs> I had a pretty rocky year that the beginning I was trying to recover from that partnership. And then I cut him off and I didn't get the business launched until March. So I took the first few months off. And last year we ended at about 600,000 in sales. Got it. So we grew a ton from the year prior well, and you, and this year, that was all all your profit that year too all my profit so i got a much better taste of what it's like to be um, a sole proprietor and how to build the team on my own and take i was much more accountable and responsible for all the decisions i think in partnerships people displace responsibility like that's his silo of the business yep. so i don't even worry about that yeah and i just got way more on top of my finances and uh, I learned a ton last year. And this year, I'm just continuing that growth and momentum. And I'm on track to double my book of business. That's awesome. So in yeah. 2018, you did 600 k How were your margins? Did you make good money? I didn't do great. I overpaid two different people on purpose. I overpaid subcontractors by about 5% on average and built a ton of good relationships. And then I overpaid my production manager because I really believed in him and I wanted him to stay on board. And I hired a production manager before I had ramped up, before I was out of phase one. Yeah. I hired him before I was even doing 10,000 because that's not me. I don't produce well. I market and sell really well. And I knew I needed to someone detail oriented that could be there for my clients so I could just go out there and hunt. Yeah. And I exactly what he did. He was, he was right there for me, supported me. And this year, I've cleaned up my margins quite a bit. Nice. So I probably only made, I had $124,000 gross of the 600,000. And of that, I had about $60,000 net. 
Okay. So I only made sixty thousand dollars last year, and this year, I'm strict about my fifty-fifty rule. All my numbers are kind of right where they need to be. I'm I'm spending a little too much on marketing. Got it. Yeah. Do you know which which marketing avenue is too expensive? Crap, Jack. Got it. What percentage is it at? Thirteen. Okay. Is that bringing in a lot of your business? It's not, but I'm not willing to give it up yet. I just started a, a call once a week with a craft jack rep and we're going through all my previous week's leads and that's really helped. So Good. I need to tap that for a couple of months before I can just kick that one to the curb. Their problem is not cost per lead because their leads aren't too expensive. Is yeah. it a lead is it a lead to estimate <clears throat> excuse me, lead to estimate conversion problem? It is? It's a lead to estimate conversion problem and I would I hate to say that it's a lead quality thing, but I see better leads at other services. Well, forget lead quality first. It's just what's your conversion lead to estimate right now? With On track. that specific, um, last week it was seven out of 10. The week before it was five out of 10. On average, I'm not sure what it is. I was tracking cost. And then what's your, what's your average job size? 2500 what's your sales rate one of my guys is 44 uh -huh. another the new guy i just hired he's at 20 got it and then i've got a part-time guy who's like 50 50 like ratio sales ratio he yeah he used to be a roofer he's retired and he does five or six estimates for me a week and just crushes it got it so are, is the 20% new guy doing a lot of the craft jack bids? So is it actually a sales issue? Because that conversion, 5 out of 10, 7 out of 10, should still be under 13%. It should be profitable. I think, it's our, I think the jobs that we're winning are pretty low job size for craft jack. And that's something that I'm struggling with is like, how do I track per lead source average job size. It's just a lot of data to track to really break it down. And yes. I'm introducing CRM to kind of help me with that. What CRM are you using? Pipe drive. Okay. So it's like a sales CRM. It's not a full yeah. business CRM. Yeah. Just a, just a sales. Got it. Cause you need help with is the marketing sales tracking. Yeah. We spent, we've sunk like 15 to 20 K into customizing Salesforce. So the whole business is run on Salesforce now. What do you think? It's going to be fucking awesome, but it's just a lot of work Yeah, and 15 and 20 grand is a lot to sink into it, but it's, yeah. it's going to be well worth that investment. Um, cause yeah, we tried several CRMs and we want something for the whole business because yeah. if I'm going to scale this thing to where we're going to go, I need checks and balances. I need ultimate accountability and I need reports to come across my desk that I know are accurate and can be cross-checked with the bank and like, there has to be checks and balances and it, I need to have reports and they need to be accurate. Um, and I, I have, I, that can't be done on Google drive. I can't scale to 20 companies, you know, in, in hundred to a couple hundred million a year on Google drive. Like I've right. got to get something in place. So Salesforce is our, our answer for now. Um, okay. So yeah, no, that's, I think is pipe drive not set up for you yet then? I purchased it at the beginning of the month and I've been transferring our information for this month. Cool. So um, not, not usable yet, but you will be able to track those. So what you want to do is um, information is power. This is one of the biggest mistakes every business owner makes is they just don't focus on the numbers. They're not, they're not standing back running their business. They're being run by it. And then if you notice that you have a problem in your business and it's not getting better, get more data. Like that's almost always helped me. Like when we were not doing really well with lead conversion, we started breaking it down to which marketer, when are we calling? How often are we calling? Who, what's, what are we saying? At the, like we just, it, you get more detailed. Um, and so I would want to know like, Hmm, I have three salespeople. It could be that craft Jack just happens to be more on this guy. Or it could yeah. be that my whole organization is just weak at selling big ticket job sizes. So my job size is too small. It, Cause it's not really conversion. If you're setting up 50, 60% on craft tech, that's like eight, it's like 90 bucks an estimate. Even if you're at 50%, yeah. 90 bucks an estimate. 
And you should be able to sell like 15, 1200 an estimate, like sales, just from a sales standpoint. And that's, that, that's where our numbers are weak. Right. I would like last year I knew it was 800 something dollars per estimate. And right. this year my sales rep that I've had the longest has increased to close to 900, but we yeah. haven't reached thousand dollar threshold per estimate that's okay you'll get there over time part of it might be like starting to wiggle your prices up a little bit more and delivering yeah. a better experience some of it is just raising your job minimum do you have a job minimum not officially but it's almost impossible to produce a job under a thousand bucks and it'd be profitable yeah well so we just won't even bid it for under 1500 anything no. And so our job size has gone from when I started this company it was 2,800. That's 2010. This year we're at like 4,400. And once we add in in-house carpentry, it'll go to like 47 or 4,800. In-house carpentry instead of subbing it out. Right. Well, right now we don't sub it out. Right now we just hand it off. Oh, okay. Right now we're just like, just, we're not going to bid it. We're not going to touch it. Here's the guy. He'll come deal with him to do carpentry. We want to do it, but it costs us some jobs, but doing it in-house and adding it costs, creates some extra expense. Right. So anyways, um, you'll keep wiggling your way there, but even if you can get, so, so that's, that's where I would look though. Obviously the guy that's at 20%, that's going to cost you. Um, yeah, and I, that's the question I wanted to talk to you about is like, how do I know that I've done my best to ramp somebody up as a salesperson? And then it's not on me, it's just him underperforming. Yeah, well, I don't know that there's an answer to that. That's necessarily right. Because um, there's all different things that you could do better. Right. Yeah. And that's the approach I take, but at the same time, I don't want to sink a bunch of investment into, into the No, room. no, look, it's, it's, um, you, it, here's the, here's the answer. The reason it's hard for me to say that is because it's not black and white. It's something you've got to be honest with yourself about, and you've gone through the micro life course. So, you know, some of the distinctions that you need to bring to that. Like, have I really been like causing them out of this, or have I been just like, just shoving this guy to the side? You know, have I really taken responsibility for a success and have I really, like, if I'm honest with myself, have I done what I know to do to support him? Have I really given him a fighting chance? Have I set clear expectations with him of what's expected? And I can also be honest with myself, like, is this really the guy? You know, is this really the guy, the guy? And um, I got to be willing to let people go. Um, there's a great video from, uh, Gary V the other day that was like, you know, what, you want to know the secret to hiring fire fast. That's the secret to hiring. You're not going to get it right. So be willing to fire fast. He's like, I hired a guy. I did three interviews with him. So I had a lot of pride wrapped up into it. It was a $150,000 hire or something, some, you know, something like that. It was a big deal hire. That's why he was interviewing him. Fired him the first day. It, it just got clear when he came in, he's like, not the guy I fired him. And so I got to kind of be like willing to do that to a degree. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we went from four production managers to, to one this, this spring, you know, we're, that's just at foothills. Like we're trying to do three and a half million. And, and by the end of February, I had one production manager and I had to re rehire and man, it's been great, you know, cause we've got great, great people. So in general, my experience, and I think most people will probably go through this is, you, three years from now, you'll be a lot more selective than you are today. Yeah, I could see that. I think your, your trend in business period will be to be more and more selective. So knowing that, stop being unselective now. You know, start being really selective now and start holding a higher standard. Now, the organic growth of a company is... Is, is an important consideration. So the better I build my business and the more reliable results I, can, I know I can produce, the more I'm willing to pay people, the better people I get. Like at your stage, like you can't guarantee that you'll necessarily have like 
enough estimates for this person to like, yeah, if I have a good person, like they will sell a million this year. Yeah. Now, if you could guarantee that, like we're kind of getting to that position where like, I'm, I'm considering posting up a sales job with a base pay of 60 K. Cause I'm like, dude, if I just find the right person, like I know the leads will be there that they, the right person could sell like 1.4 in a year. So I'm okay with offering a higher and higher base pay, but you've almost got to keep leveling that up. So if I can, the best person I can find for a $25,000 base salary, if that person can go out and make 50 grand on commission, then the person I can hire at a $35,000 salary should be able to make 60. And then I can hire someone at a $45,000 base salary to make 70. So you kind of right. like step your way up like that a little bit. And so there's a good, there's a good uh, thing from Bezos. There's like three questions he asked, you know, or his company asked before they make any hire. One of them is, will I admire this person? Like that's, that's pretty powerful. Like would I actually like, is not necessarily like, will I look up to them? But like, is there something I'd really like admire about this person? Right. You know, or are they like someone I'm almost talking myself into hiring because I need somebody. Second question is, will this person raise the average? That's a great question. Now, if every single person I ever hire raises the average, my company gets better and better and better and better and better. Yeah. So I like that one a lot. And then I don't know about his third one. I didn't like it, so I didn't remember it. Yeah. But I like those two. Um, yeah. So. No, that's a great point. And then I'm, I'm learning a ton in Breakthrough about how to... Oh, you're in Breakthrough right now? Yeah, I'm in the maps course. Nice, dude. Good, yeah. good, good. I was actually going to ask because you should be in that with where you're at now. Yeah. No, I, I'm learning a lot about how to spend way more time up front before making a hire. Yes. I'm doing the same thing, man. We did. We've, we've gotten... We're hiring a salesperson right now. We've had 200 applicants. I've set up... Two, we've set up two interviews. How many phone calls? Probably 20. 20 phone calls. Yeah, I could see that. And that's, I worried that I wasn't doing enough interviews, but I guess with the right candidates and pre-screening them on the phone, it's not but, about number of interviews, is it? It's about the right person. And when I hired my three production managers who are awesome, like all, I'd take any one of those three against any of the three that aren't here anymore. Like they're awesome guys. Um, and they're kicking ass already. Like they're, they're just great. Um, we got about 250 applicants. We set up 12 interviews, but of those 12, there were five that were clearly the best applications and resumes and cover letters of those five. I hired three. And the other two were definitely the next two best applicants. And then the seven that we kind of were like, uh, give them a shot, were noticeably worse. So I'm like, I'm still calling my maybes for sales, but I'm starting to find that, dude, if they're not blown, if they can't write a good cover letter and their resume doesn't stick out to me, they're already fighting an uphill battle. And I'm still trying, like, if they didn't do a cover letter, but they have a great resume, we're calling them. But so far, 100% of the time, we don't like them. And if they've got a, a cover letter and a resume, but it's kind of weak, we're like, yeah, give them a shot. 100% of the time, we haven't liked them. And so, look, I'm just like, if I get the right salesperson in here, like our sales guys are averaging like 27, 28,000 a week in sales now. And on like 13 estimates, they're selling about 2,000 an estimate. And... I'm like, dude, if I just find the right person, they should come in and sell like someone who raises the average. That's like 35,000 sales a week. I don't care if it takes me six weeks to find that person. I need the right person. So, yeah, I'm back to your leads. You said 13 estimates per, per guy. I can't help but think that because you guys are going door to door that you guys have a much, the leads are much better. You think they're better door to door? Not necessarily in all cases, but you guys must be doing a great job pre-qualifying because sometimes I'll give an estimator 13 estimates and I'm like, there's almost no way he could have sold 13 grand. Like a lot of the estimates he went to are really weak. So it's an yeah. interval issue. Yeah. I mean, we're, 
honestly, we're, we're disappointed with 13 estimates because we've had quite a bad rescheduling cancellation rate. So we've really been working on our initial calls with the people who are setting the estimates because the estimators aren't setting them. Um, right. the office manager, marketing manager setting them. Um, I'd have to run a report and I can do this now, but I haven't run it yet on the, the numbers per source. Right. We're setting up about 25 estimates a week from our website and call-ins. And then we're setting up about 30 to 35 estimates a week from door to door. Got it. And then we're doing about 42 estimates a week. And so we're setting up 55, 60, doing 42, some are rescheduling. We've also had a lot of bad weather and stuff out here, but it's still like really not that great. But we just brought on two more door-to-door -door marketers. The averages are going up. We're starting to really hammer job site marketing once production starts. And then our phone line's going, getting busier. And then we'll activate lead services once we bring on this other salesperson. So I think we'll be able to get to 80. What's that? You don't even have lead sources on? No. Wow. No, just a couple, but mostly not just because we, we're getting about 80 leads a week from door to door with, it, that was with three guys and now, now five, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. 60 to 80 leads a week. So we've gotten that dialed in. I mean, I sent out an email yesterday. Are you still getting my emails? I am. I love them. I got, oh shit. Yeah. I got your email yesterday about door to door. Was that uh, yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. One way to dominate marketing. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm thinking about making a door to door course because we've got that pretty dialed in now, but it's, I can't just like add it to the course. I already undercharged for painting business pro, but yeah, I know. I'm thinking about making that. So we'll see what the response was to that email. I'm kind of keeping track of people's responses and clicks and stuff to see what people want and what they're interested in yeah. to make. And, um, that's on the, that's on the list. Cause we've definitely, I've totally changed the door to door system. It's a $500, it's a $500 weekly salary now. Okay. So we're hiring really good people. Like CJ has been work, working with us for four years now. Brad has been with us for a year. Colton's been with us for like seven months. And those are like our, our three men guys. So there's no, there's not really any turnover anymore. Not really any attrition. They're producing really good results. They love their job. Um, they're getting better. We're actually, we're trying to figure out how a marketing person can make like a thousand dollars a week working like 30 hours. Cause then it's a killer job. Then I can yeah. find great people and then I can have less people producing more results. I mean, we, sh we want to be able to get these guys to be able to set up about 15 estimates a week each, um, which isn't that hard to do actually. So we're making a lot of, a lot of changes to that. Yeah, I'm really curious to hear your new, your new style of structuring it because I'm still following the format in the painting business pro course. Yeah, and it's it it works. You know, it still works wonders. It just there's more turnover, there's more attrition, there's people who don't seem to give a shit a little bit more. Quality of leads isn't as good, and you need more people to produce the same result. I just got sick of having seven people to get seventy leads. Yep, that's exactly, and it's. To me, I had to hire someone just to babysit because it was exhausting. Yeah. Hiring yeah. that quality of person. The same principle we're talking about with hiring your production manager, your salesperson is the same thing with marketing. It's, yep. it's like, it's kind of the catch 22. Like I was talking to some of my partners and they were like, I need to figure out how to recruit better people. I'm like, you're looking in the wrong place. You want to recruit better people, make it a better job. Yeah. Make them money, invest in them deeply, give them amazing opportunity, give them great income, give them a lot of training and support and development, make it a kick-ass position at a kick-ass company with a kick-ass boss where they make kick-ass money. And then if you're, if you're like, dude, I'm going to invest into this person, you're not going to want to hire just anybody and people can smell that shit. Yeah. You know, they can also smell when you're full, full of it and just trying to get a body out there. So that's Makes kind of the sense. same thing. It's like, and so we're just holding higher expectations. We're like, yeah, we'll pay you 500 bucks a week, but you have to knock for 20 hours a week. And then you have to attend five hours a week of training. So it's five hours a week of training, but it's all at the same time. And one's the team meeting, one's their one-on-one -on -one meeting. And then like three hours of role player conference call. And, um, 
Then they knock for 20 hours. They get 20 leads, set up 10 estimates, and I can justify that hmm. for 500 bucks. It's 50 bucks an estimate. Probably not far off of what you're at right now. No. But it's, it attracts a better person. And, you know, there's, you know, we've changed our job posting, our call script, our interview script, our onboarding training, our marketing schedule, uh, our SOPs, like how much depth we train people in now. They're basically being trained as like a mini salesperson. Right. How are you pre-qualifying leads for, to get like, um, how do I know when to turn down an estimate? Would you do it? That'd be, that'd be why, like what I do, do I want to do this estimate? Would I do it? And then you got to look and see if it's a no, why? And then put that into your system. Okay. So, yeah. I think I need more leads, more estimates, and I need to get more selective about what I'm sending my guys out to. That would probably help. And, you know, you'll, you also kind of learn so that the trap you don't want to fall in there is not doing as being too picky and leaving money on the table because sometimes there's someone who's like, well, I mean, we'd like an estimate. I don't know if we'll even paint this year, man. I've booked those so many times. Yeah. I'm so not worried about that as much as I am. Like I just took a lead call before I got on the phone with you and she goes, I started talking to her about locks and primer, how you've got to prime the brick and it's really expensive, blah, blah, blah. And she's like kind of price anchoring her on the phone. And she was like, well, look, my max budget's 3000. So I don't want to waste your time. And it's like, obviously I still booked the estimate. I want to educate her. I want to provide value. Um, but sometimes you can smell it on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So she to identify whether those, our opportunities are people who are just going to tire kick and go at the lowest bid. So how many estimates a week are these guys going out on? So you got the guy that's doing five or six bids a week selling three. And then you've got the guy who's doing how many selling 44% and then the guy doing how many selling 20%. The guy that's selling, that's been with me the longest that sells 43%. He does about between 13 and 15. The new guy does between does about 10 and then the other guy's doing five. So we're right at about 30 estimates per week. And, and what do you sell a week? About 20? $37,000 two weeks ago, $15,000 last week. Mind you, these guys are like four or five weeks new. The two yeah. new guys just hired them. So I don't really have a ton of data, but on average, right about 2025 in sales. Yeah. And, sure. I, and it's my main sales guy that's carrying us. The the new guy, in grand total, he sold like six six thousand bucks, and he's gone to thirty estimates. Can the good guy take on more, or does he not want more? What we found is the good guy was doing twenty before I hired the new guys, and was not doing well. He wasn't Ooh. giving the customers enough. It was like a point of diminishing return where he was going to so many estimates driving around that he wasn't. Are, these he new wasn't guys, are they commission only? Yeah. Commission only. The new yeah, guy I mean, gave a draw because I was like, you're not going to survive if I don't pay you. I mean, yeah. he just wasn't cutting it. Yeah. I, mean, I think I, honestly, the, I, I would just breakthrough Academy is going to be perfect for where you're at right now. I think so too. And they'll, they'll be able to kind of coach you through that. Cause they'll be doing like this call, but with more time and more detail. Yeah. And they'll have the picture of the whole business too. What's your production manager's comp plan? He makes $50,000. He'll make $50,000 this year. That's great. And you're making 50% of subs. So your net, your, your gross margin is like 45%. And so marketing's at 10, you're at 35 and then sales commission at seven sales commission at seven overhead at about five. I'm spending a good amount on training and development. I'm, I'm supposed to make about 180. Not bad though. Not bad. Yeah, no. yeah. I got to save eight grand last month. I was like, this is awesome. If I just yeah. saved eight grand every month. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good, man. That's good. I'll have more recommendations for you as you keep growing. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. Cool. Um, 
Cool, man. Awesome. Keep killing it. Anything else? I have a couple notes here. Let me pull it up. We talked about how to track data effectively. Sounds like you like Salesforce. Oh, so I've talked to a couple people about my story. What are your thoughts on me being some kind of ambassador for Painting Business Pro? Um, yeah, what do you mean? I don't know what it would look like, but I, I'm really passionate about this system. And I think it could help more than just painters. Yeah. And there's a ton of painters in my area that I think could benefit from this. Um, yeah, I is mean, this, I'm open. I'm for sure open, man, because I agree with you. Is this Painting Business Pro in the platform you have it, a vehicle you're trying to grow? Or are you wanting what? to go in a different direction? Yeah, no. Well, I'm going to do all of it, man, but I'm going pretty much all in on, on the painting business for now. Honestly, I'm going to put out um, probably in the next couple of weeks at some point, um, I'm going to put something out to just share with people like, hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm working on. My doors are open. Yeah. Like, you see an opportunity to do, to contribute to this? Like, let me know. Like, I'm open. You know, basically, Painting Business Pro is going to absolutely grow. I'm going to release more core, more small, more individual courses instead of just, hey, here's the whole business system. We're going to put a door to door thing together, put estimating training together, put just dealing, you know, just subcontractor training together with just team building and a lot more depth than is currently in the course. Basically we'll make, I'll make more detailed courses for every aspect than is currently in the whole course. And then the whole course will be more expensive, but include all of that. Got it. And then I need to make, uh, I need to make some other programs that I don't have mastered. Like I'll have to bring some people in for commercial painting, commercial estimating, industrial epoxy floors, stuff like that. Um, and then I'm going to be continuing to grow the reach. You know, we're going to do, I'm going to get into, I know there's like the Idaho painter and people who do um, really amazing tutorials and videos, but I'm going to make how to videos that are from the business side of things. Right. Like just what you need to know to master like exterior residential repaints with employees and painting and how prep should be done and how, how to paint efficiently and fast and profitably and under budget and not just the trade. There's plenty of that out there, but I'm going to make tutorial stuff on efficiency stuff, like the business side of it. That makes sense. Um, and, you know, ultimately just, you know, I just want to keep like leading this industry and then we're going to eventually open up like our partnership program. Once we get our companies more dialed in because they're starting to go crazy but we're still going to systemize them more and get those really dialed. And then we're going to scale like locations everywhere and I'll use painting business pro for that. Okay. To help, um, recruit people, our partners. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. I mean, let me know how I can help. I don't want to, I don't want to sell people on the painting business pro course if that's not what you're wanting. Does that make sense? Oh, no. I, yeah. Um, got it. Yeah. And that's not, uh, so shoot me. You know, we, we can just talk about that more. Sounds good. You know, cause I, I don't, I have no idea. I don't know how to structure that stuff. People who want to, you've been an awesome advocate for it. Obviously it's made a big difference for you. And yeah, man, I want all the, all the, want to, you know, build an army, build a better community. Our Facebook group, I think has been a lot more active and like, that's been going really good. Um, obviously like this video is going to be great. So I'm going to be doing like these success story videos on Saturdays on YouTube. I'm doing other videos on Tuesdays for people who are like, aren't members, but like have questions and stuff to start to just that. We're still releasing videos every Thursday and then my Facebook pages get more active. So I'm doing it in a pretty efficient way, but, um, no man, I want, I'm totally open to, you know, whatever you're interested in doing and I'm down to structure that however you are interested in doing it. So you maybe articulate to me and let me know what you're interested in or what thoughts you already had and we'll see how we can put some together. There's another guy who got my course recently who's got a really big YouTube channel that has nothing to do with painting, but he's going to start releasing some painting videos and talking about his success with painting business pro because he's been killing it. So right. 
Um, and then, you know, one of the guys I talked to today, you know, in the group, Roderick Richardson, I think it's Richardson, the guy who keeps doing all these big ass commercial jobs and industrial jobs and he's doing flooring and like all this stuff. I, yeah. I talked to him today and, and that was a fun conversation, but um, there's, there might be something there. So dude, I'm just like, let's just blow this thing up and, and provide awesome stuff to people um, and help people run a better business. Awesome, man. Yeah. So shoot, shoot me an email, all right, with whatever your ideas are. Okay. Well, what else is on your list? Nothing, man. Cool. We covered it. Cool. How many weeks into MAP are you? I have the sales and then there's the last one. So there's two more. Okay. Nice. Yeah, just week four today. And then you're going into PAC? Yeah. I mean, I've never been a classroom style learner. I yeah. want that coach. I want to join the implementation. Yeah. That's where yeah. I feel like I'm really going to get the value out of this course. Yes. Right now they're just dumping information over three hours. It's like, how do I, how do I use all these takeaways and implement them in a it week? It's like three years. It takes like three years. Yeah. yeah. No, that breakthrough is awesome, dude. I'm actually going to join their board. Um, there, that's like the other program, like the board or whatever. I'm going to get into that soon for what I'm trying to do. Nice. Um, I just, yeah, we've got lots of expenses happening right now. We've got a really intense attorney doing corporate structure stuff for us right now. And then $15,000 in the sales force. Yeah. yeah, that too. And then we got health insurance company-wide for everybody and a um, bunch of other expenses. But it's I good just, stuff, man. What's that? I just added health insurance too. I'm trying, and I have a finance guy giving all my team IRAs. It's those little things, man. Like yeah. you were talking, you want the best of the best. You got to provide it. I uh, totally, man. Totally. Well, Mason, you are the man. I'm glad you're doing good, man. This is going to be the best year. And hey, this just points to for anybody who's watching. This kind of points to the thing I've said a lot, which is you don't get in this business for the first year or two. You know, year one, you did 160, felt like you were crushing it, but also lots of ups and downs, very hard work, lots of challenges. Year two, got your ass kicked, like didn't make very good margins at all. But now year three, man, it's so crazy because I think if most people started a business and we said, hey, by year five, you can make $200,000 a year. People are like, I'll run through walls for five years to, if I can get that. And then they, they, they get tripped up in the first month, make excuses and quit. And it's like, man, people just don't get it. Like you're in this for year one and two to learn. Like you don't, you're not going to show up. Very few people show up and just dominate right away. I certainly didn't, you know, right. but you got your whole life ahead of you. So it's really crazy, man, to think about how far you've already come and you're 22 or 23 years old. 23? 23. Yeah. 23. Okay. Yeah. Exciting, man. It really is. Yeah, you're making us all look bad. <laughs> all right, dude. Well, it was good talking with you, Mason. Thanks for being flexible with me today, dude. Yeah, you too. Take care. All right, man. Yeah, send me that email. Okay, man. Talk to you soon.